Praise God. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. Jesus is the only hope that you have. And Jesus, he does teach that to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall you salt it? So at this point, Jesus, and Jesus is the only hope, he requires a man to be in full obedience. So Jesus is giving the right teachings that a man, he would come to the Son of God and obey the Son of God. For Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Jesus is the Lamb of God. So will you come to forgiveness of sins? Will you confess and forsake your sins? It is a choice that a man he must make. And this is why the Son of God, he teaches that everyone shall have fire but a sacrifice will have salt. So is your life sacrificed to Jesus and the Father of Jesus? You do not want to be salted with fire. Rather, present your body a living sacrifice to God, holy, acceptable to God, this is a reasonable service for anyone that is confessing Jesus. And that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that you can be transformed in the renewing of your mind. And that you would not be conformed to this world. This world is passing away. So do not go down with the world. But be alive in Jesus. Be alive in the Son of God. So yes, it's true that salt is good, but if it has lost its saltness, how are you going to season it? See, in the spiritual, salt can lose taste. And this is why Jesus, he warns, because there's many that, you know, you grew up in church. And maybe you had a real repentance and you had real faith in the Son of God, but you've gone wayward. Well, you cannot see the kingdom of God in this state. You must come back to Jesus. And perhaps as a young child, you were taught the correct ways. And perhaps you even walked a straight and narrow path at one point, entering through the gate. But now you've went astray from the Son of God. And anyone that goes astray from the Son of God, he must come back to God and ask for forgiveness like the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he went away from God. He went into sin, but he came back. So in like manner, anyone that has left Jesus, come back to Jesus. <clears throat> come back to the Son of God. Now, what the Bible teaches is that anyone living in sin who has never known Jesus has gone astray from Jesus because Jesus is the creator and Jesus is the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. 
So every man is created with this light. So then if a man goes to darkness, he is contrary to God. So come back to God. This is where the Son of God is in redemption. He brings back His own creation from the wayward manner of life. For when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. And neither were they thankful. So in this situation, a man being separated from God, there's but one way back. There was one way to live in the first place. If a man will not glorify God, surely there's only one way back. So a man in this state, you have to look at importunity. You have to come begging to God. And surely God, in this state, if you come with humility, God will receive you. And you can be a friend of God. But will a man love life today? Does a man want to see many days that are good? Does a man want to inherit the kingdom of God? You have to want it. You have to have a good desire. God, He's not too far away from any one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. And even false prophets and poets of this world, they know we're the offspring of God. But will you worship God in spirit and truth? Will you be no more ignorant of the God that created all things? And will you resist the devil? If you resist the devil, the devil will flee from you. So draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh unto you. So the message is a man who is a sinner, he must cleanse his hands and purify his heart. Will you purify your heart today before God? Come back to God on His terms. You can wash your hands in innocency. I care about your soul to be saved in Jesus' name. You can wash your hands in innocency. You can be as a little child before God. That's a true humility. And that's a pure heart. And faith does purify the heart. For this is how God made you. To see the sins of even your parents and to say no. And that you could have been that little child and you could have grown up and been a tender plant before your maker and to listen to God. Now, if a man does not listen to God, again, that's why the blood of Jesus is being preached. That yes, all men have gone astray. But you don't have to keep living this way. You can come back to Jesus. And that Jesus, he's the only mediator between God and man. He's the only one that stands between you and God, the Son of God, Jesus. So He's there to forgive you. He's there to give you a lively hope. Because if you hope in things that you see, it's not common sense. But also look at what you see. It's a downward spiral. It's going down. Yeah, I would say over the span of almost 6,000 years, give or take, it's been a slow death. 
But it's not God's will that you perish, but that you would come to repentance. And that you could have repentance in the sight of God, that God does grant repentance. And God gives grace to the lowly. Do you want the grace of God? You can have it. And that you could have this favor in the sight of God. All things are of God. And that's why the Bible teaches that the old man would be crucified with Christ. And that the body of sins might be destroyed. That henceforth you should not serve sin. If you want to come into God's will and you want to go where the Son of God is leading the sheep, is in a good pasture, is beside good water, and is a pureness. And there's a covenant of salt. A Jesus Christ will take the kingdom. A Jesus Christ must reign. Today you can allow him to reign in your heart. That you could submit to Jesus and listen to Jesus because all other ways are false. And you can tell by the fruits of those that follow them. For example, Islam or Mormons, they have their hearts set on polygamy. And don't let them lie to you and say they don't. For if you follow a God that allows it, that's your God. And there are gods many, lords many. But you need to have one God. And believe on the Son of God. Who does make the Father manifest. And Jesus... He's the good shepherd. And Jesus gave his life for his sheep. That if a man will see Jesus, he sees the light of the world. And if a man, he does see the light, let that man walk in the light. And if a man walks in the light, you know he won't stumble because all things are of God. God gives the way. God knows the place. For the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil and all sin is understanding. So will you depart from all sin and come to Jesus? He that is dead is freed from sin. That's a marvelous thing in the sight of God. And as well that if you be dead with Christ, you can believe that you'll live with Jesus. And you can live with the Son of God. And you can have an abundant life. And you can have life to come. In the world to come. Everlasting righteousness is coming with Jesus. Will you receive it? Will you receive the reckoning that is from Jesus? That Jesus will confess your name before his Father? That Jesus, he's at the right hand of God the Father. And his throne works as a mercy seat that Jesus is judging and that Jesus holds some innocent but yes he is holding most guilty but this is because they hate knowledge and they do not choose the fear of the Lord and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil a Jesus is in this light. Jesus is the only one in a glorified body dwelling in this light. He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's the Alpha and the Omega. 
He's the bright and the morning star. So come to the Son of God today. Come to the water. And believe with all your heart. Have remission of past sins. And God can take the stony heart away and give you a heart of flesh. Your very flesh can be fresher than a child's. You can return to the days of your youth. That Jesus is the king. And he knows how to rule and reign. He's going to do what those before him did not do. God gave man an opportunity to obey him and to serve the kingdom. And even some great men of faith left the faith. And through this, a great destruction came. And there were many men over the years that saw the destruction. But now we have hope in Jesus. And we know he will get it right. And we know that he'll deliver up the kingdom to his father. And we know it's going to be. And this is a faith that is not comparable to other religions. This faith gives you purity. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the offspring of David. Jesus came into the same flesh. Jesus knows what you're dealing with. Jesus is the high priest. He can have compassion on the ignorant. Jesus dealt with infirmities. See, it's written in the book of Proverbs, the spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. But when you have a wounded spirit, who can bear this? That's why you got to come back to Jesus. He can take away your sorrows. Jesus can bear your grief. And now you can have the Holy Ghost. You can pray in the Holy Ghost. And you can have sustaining. Have a sustainable foundation. Jesus is the quickening spirit from heaven. Jesus is the bright and the morning star. Jesus is the one that you need. Jesus and the preaching of the Son of God and the blood of Jesus is a free gift. You can buy without money today. Ask and it shall be given you. But will a man seek with all his heart? And will a man receive the sayings of Jesus that you are the salt of the earth? But if salt loses the savor, is not fit for the ground, the earth, not even the dung hill, but it must be cast out. And this of men. So there are men that acknowledge the Son of God that what he says is true and they agree with Jesus. And they are ready to judge with the Son of God. Jesus teaches that if you cleanse out your own eye, then you can see your brother's speck. Jesus teaches to repent and have faith. Not just to repent, but walk in faith. That you would love your neighbor as yourself.
that you would follow the golden rule. That if a man, you see your neighbor living in sin apart from God, that you would tell him. For this is the law and the prophets. Now, of course, if you don't judge, you have to look at your heart. Perhaps you're being honest. And you're saying, well, I won't judge this person because I do the same. Okay? If that same thing is sin before God, humble yourself to God today and be born again. And then you can see clearly. Seek the Lord's strength. Seek His face continually. If a man sees Jesus, he's set free from the bondage of sin. So see Jesus, walk in Jesus, believe on Jesus. Jesus will not share his glory with anyone. He and his Father, this says the Holy Ghost, are one. You need to depart from any religions that give glory to created beings, such as Mary, or men held to way too high of an esteem, such as Buddha, Muhammad. You'll know them by their fruits. Jesus is not served with traditions of men. A man cannot be a mason and be born again. A man cannot serve mammon and the Son of God at the same time. A man cannot fight for this world and then fight for the world to come when Jesus comes back. So when a man builds a tower, does he know what it's going to take? And is he prepared? One foundation you know that you might be standing on in this if you're born again is that your heart's prepared from the onset and that you do know sin. Now you've started the race. How will you finish? Jesus is the author and the finisher. Jesus will finish for those that are obedient, that are watchful for the Son of God, that do not depart from the Son of God, those that know the Lord's will and those that do it. For this is the true child of God, who is led by the Spirit of God. And that you have this liberty in Jesus, and you can have this liberty today. All things are yours. But will a man love this? Will a man come to Jesus? He that is of God hears God's words. And I have to be honest with you, if you do not hear these words, you're not of God. These are the words that have been clearly spoken by the prophets and the apostles. But what other words get you out of all sin? What other words separate you from this world? What other words give you a lively hope? So man must try his heart, examine himself. And a man must see what is clearly seen, that the world passes away in the lust thereof, and that we brought nothing into this world and we cannot take anything out. So even with just clothing and food, you can be content. But is a man content? 
For Jesus does not receive those living in the sin of complaining or drunkenness or riotous living, gluttony, mischievous madness, abominable idolatries. A man must leave that before coming to Jesus. I come the right way the first time. And for those that have realized today I have a false faith, it's not too late for you. God has given you this day. This day has the Lord made. God has given you this chance. Today is the day of salvation. And after hearing this word, the gospel of your salvation, you can believe it. And you can be sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. You can have the earnest of your inheritance. You can have the Spirit of God. You can be comforted. You can be reconciled to your God. But a man, he will have to meet his Maker one day. We all have to stand before God. And for some, and I would say most, it's a dreadful day. It's a terrible day. And that's a choice that a man has to make to live separate from God. It's a choice to live with God. It's a choice. So choose this day whom you will serve. Will you serve man or will you serve God? You can be bought with a price. And from henceforth, you do not have to serve man anymore. You do not have to serve sin. You do not have to be in bondage to iniquity, bitterness, envy. You can be liberated from these. There's some that are racist. You can be forgiven, but you need to stop. There's all sorts of sins that people are doing. And that God, he wants you to have salvation. But he also commands that you stop. That you would surrender, that you would say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. Because in the sight of God, it breaks God's heart for you to sin. That God made none of us to sin. And that God wants you to be free. And that you can walk in Jesus. In Jesus is no sin. That you could have Jesus today. And you could be holy before God. You can have perfect holiness in the sight of God. And that you can be an ex drunk. You can give up smoking weed, smoking cigarettes, vaping, you can give it all away, all addictions. Jesus takes away all sin. So bless God. Jesus teaches before his second coming. Because iniquity abounds, the love of many shall grow cold. But there is also a falling away first. Of the very few that are saved right now in this world. Hear what the prophecy of the Son of God is saying. Do not let your love grow cold. If you have the love of God, stay on fire for God. Live for God. If you live in Jesus, stand in Jesus.
If you've been set free from sin, look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. Jesus is the day's man. He stands before you and his father. He's there for you. Who will you receive? Will you give up all sin and come to Jesus? Jesus teaches that man's time does come to an end though. For there is a man covetous and that night his soul was required of him. So you need to have a life sacrificed to God. And that life God will season, God will salt. And to the others, there is fire. And there is a hell. Yes. So avoid this. In Jesus' name, avoid this place. Bless God.